not be fooled by the sunshine now there it is that is a live view out of the window but do not be fooled by all of that sunshine because here in the UK we have had some of the worst weather for many many years in fact where I'm living at the moment where I live <laughs> I think last night may have been the worst weather ever since moving here that's what I'm saying <laughs> welcome here we go it's English addict live lots of things coming up today and of course <laughs> it's mr. Steve's birthday as well welcome everyone yes we are here as live as live can be from the birthplace of the English language that is of course England <laughs> hi everybody this is mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy well are you happy today I really hope so because we have lots of things coming up it's mr. Steve's birthday today mmm so Steve will be with us slightly different today because we will be talking about Steve's birthday also words and phrases connected with birthdays and also getting older <laughs> something we all share one thing we all have in common and that is the fact that we are all getting older yes we are all getting old so I thought today some interesting words and phrases connected to that very subject also Steve is here and maybe or maybe not he will be showing us some of the gifts that he's received we had a lovely day yesterday Mr. Steve's mum and also his sister came over here yesterday we had a lovely afternoon despite the fact that the weather was absolutely awful I can't begin to tell you how bad the weather has been over the past 20 hours so yesterday we went into town the rain was coming down very heavily the wind was blowing strongly and we were walking around much Wenlock fighting our way through the wind and the rain so it was a very hectic very <laughs> almost unpleasant however we had the most amazing meal at our usual place a big hello to all my lovely friends at the copper kettle we had a lovely meal yesterday a, a traditional hot pot if you don't know what hot pot is if you've never had a hot pot here in England an English hot pot is amazing it has everything in it it really does and also we had a nice chat some gifts were exchanged yesterday as well so yes we had a great day and of course today is the day it is mr. Steve's birthday today it really really is so last night a lot of dramatic things happened as well the weather was awful as I've mentioned already I think last night's weather was some of the worst weather I've ever experienced since moving here in fact as I stand here now just to give you an idea of how much rain we've had last night we had so much rain I can hear the rain flowing behind me past the house so there is a gentle sound of the rain <laughs> or should I say the water flowing by the house not just that but also last night we had a power cut so all the electricity went off last night so mr. Steve and myself we sat in the dark with just one candle lighting up the room <laughs> and we were forced to have a conversation we had to sit and talk of course we have no problem doing that normally but last night it was very strange we could hear the rain and the wind outside 
and inside the house we were sitting in darkness because there was no electricity so lots of dramatic things going on last night storm dennis is the name of the storm that we've been suffering for the past couple of days so storm dennis and it's still going on outside now so this is the view from the window about an hour ago so have a look this is something i recorded earlier so there is the view from the window earlier about about one hour ago and now you can see things have changed quite a lot so let's have a look outside now and you can see it's it's much nicer so the sun is now out you can see there are some sheep in the distance oh look some lovely sheep and also you can see that it is still windy there is still a lot of wind blowing around however everything is looking much nicer now thank goodness for that that's all i can say thank goodness for that hello to everyone on the live stream hi thank you for joining me i had a couple of technical problems this morning now it wasn't my fault so that's the reason why i am slightly late again <laughs> It seems to be a regular thing now, my lateness, so I do apologise. However, a couple of days ago, my computer had a major update. You may have heard this, that the Windows 10 platform, the operating system in most people's computers nowadays, Windows 10, it had a major update. So basically, my operating system in my computer was rebuilt from scratch so everything had to be reinstalled slowly as the operating system was updated and <laughs> I didn't realize that it was also make a lot of changes to the settings in my computer so I had to spend this morning trying to work out all of the changes that the new version of Windows 10 has so that's what I've been doing this morning <laughs> besides watching the water flow past my window there is so much water outside I've never seen so much water on the ground to be honest with you anyway enough of that we have more important things to talk about because yes we have the live chat oh so nice to see many people lots of people already on the live chat hello to you wherever you are watching in the world maybe it is your birthday today perhaps you are celebrating your birthday also and in around about 15 minutes we will have mr steve as well joining us in the studio because it is it is his birthday today so hello to the live chat oh wafe hello wafe lafian hello to you guess what you are first on today's live chat <laughs> congratulations to you however technically technically it isn't it isn't wafe who is first in fact i received a message earlier this morning on the live stream before i started so here is a lovely message from netra who says many happy returns of the day mr steve have a wonderful time with your close ones well we did that yesterday you are too you too are a wonderful teacher i may not be able to attend today's live chat hence the text here so thank you netra for your very early message <laughs> on the live chat before i even started to stream today so it was already there so thank you very much for your message as well also for steve's birthday oh belarusia belarusia has sent a picture of mr steve's favorite car at the moment so yes thank you very much for the photograph of the mercedes 
for mr steve's birthday i will show it to him later on oh and also thank you very much for your other picture as well and this looks like well i think on the left i think that is me with the glasses and on the right i think that is that mr steve i think so with his blue eyes Ooh, you have captured mr steve's blue eyes very well i must say so thank you belarusia for those photographs lovely more of mr steve's birthday coming a little bit later on marina is here as well marina happy birthday mr steve and hello to mr duncan unfortunately it isn't my birthday today it is mr steve's birthday definitely also it's Sunday <laughs> oh Beatrice hello Beatrice nice to see Beatrice here as well hello mr. Duncan happy Sunday from Argentina and also happy birthday to mr. Steve I have a feeling there will be a lot of greetings for Steve today because it's his birthday hello flower hello Kaiba hello also Maria oh <laughs> Maria I'm saying hello to Maria thank you Maria for joining me today it is Sunday it's also mr. Steve's birthday by the way if you are new to my live stream don't forget you can catch me right here on YouTube every Sunday Wednesday and Friday from 2 p.m. UK time so that is when you can find me on YouTube for those who aren't sure when I'm on so now you know there are the times Mirella hello Duncan how is your mum feeling is she feeling better well I won't talk too much about that at the moment but yes I have sent all of your best wishes to my mother thank you very much for those lovely kind thoughts and comments as well hello black gacha hello to you I'm very intrigued by your name by the way very intrigued Ray hello Ray Zeng from australia wow now you might be the most distant viewer at the moment on my live stream so a big good day <laughs> to australia i'm sure you get that all the time so ray zeng who is watching in australia nice to see you here today hello kaiba noemi also palmyra also Nestor hello Nestor nice to see you here today Amit hello Mr. Duncan hope you are awesome happy birthday to Mr. Steve by the way he is quite young just 100 years old well sometimes Steve feels like he's 100 years old so now and again Steve does complain about his aches and pains <laughs> as we all do from time to time hello sweetness I'm so glad to see you here again today is a special day because it's mr. Steve's birthday thank you very much so many people wanting to say hello Artur Artur says hello to mr. Duncan that's me by the way for those wondering who is that strange man on the computer staring at me in a very odd way it's me mr. Duncan that's my name I teach English on YouTube hello mr. Bruno nice to see that you have not blown away I know I can't begin to tell you how much rain we had last night it was like a monsoon and it it went on all night and it only it only stopped raining about an hour ago however outside at the moment the weather is looking lovely look at that now it's hard to believe how bad the weather was earlier on but you can see 
you might be able to see the clouds moving by very quickly so it is still very windy outside the studio and there is another view and can you see all the sheep in the field oh yes there is some lovely sheep grazing in the distance so that is the view outside now a lot of people say mr duncan we love looking out of your window we might do that again later on however we have the live chat lots of words and phrases connected with having your birthday coming up later on can i also say a big special thank you to mm, can i say thank you to petros also loretta andre and olga thank you very much for your lovely paypal donations this month very kind of you thank you very much and i know that some of those do those donations were actually for mr steve <laughs> yes don't worry i will pass your donations on to mr steve i will buy him something nice so thank you once again for your lovely support to petros loretta andre and also olga and let us not forget also i have my lovely patreon supporters as well mika ding also andrew julie anna oleg and michael so thank you also for your continuing support on patreon as well so thanks a lot for that and don't forget i do everything here on youtube for free it costs you nothing to watch this not only that oh my goodness i also have a website as well now this particular website is in its early stages so i will be adding some new things to the website hopefully next week as long as life does not become too hectic so i'm hoping to add and also change some of the things on my website but you can find all of my playlists on there so if you want to find out what mr duncan is doing on youtube then my website is probably a good place to go to especially if you've never seen my lessons before so there it is my website is now up and running and as I said, I will be making some changes as well to the website over the next few days. Thank you also to. Oh, hello to Pedro. Pedro Belmont is here today. Pedro Belmont. Will he be going away? Mm. Let's find out, shall we, later? Thank you very much, Saturino. Nice to see you here as well. Apparently. It feels like spring where Saturino is sitting. It is 22 degrees and I am on my balcony in front of the blue sea. <gasps> Can I just say I feel slightly envious of you sitting out there on your balcony looking at the sea. But at least you haven't forgotten about me. So you're still watching me even though you have a lovely view in front of you <laughs> hello angela hello thank you very much for your lovely birthday greetings for steve thank you very much also we have sherry hello sherry ma sherry amor hello also to pedro again oh pedro is still here he hasn't gone yet palmira says my nephew lives in the uk and he is exactly like dennis is that his name so palmyra is your is your nephew's name dennis hmm, interesting also we have alberto with birthday greetings for mr steve and we are now up to date with the live chat Courtchi is here also Anna here in Rome it is warm and sunny I wish it was warm and sunny here well we have the sunshine but we don't have any of the warmth and it is very hot 
very cold and wet I can't begin to tell you how dramatic it was last night so many things going on we had the power the electricity went off and I had to sit with mr. Steve in the dark with a candle and we were just we were just talking for ages talking of which we will be doing that soon mr. Steve will be joining us in a few moments and we'll be talking about birthday greetings the way in which you can express birthday greetings to your friends and relations and lots of other things as well meanwhile we will have a look at one of my lessons I have been teaching English on YouTube for many years nearly 14 years and here now is one of my English lessons to give you a taste of the sort of thing I do right here can you see what sort of weather we're having here today well there is poor visibility for a start it isn't a clear day by any means it is a foggy day here in England we can use foggy as an idiom to describe the inability to remember something we can say I haven't the foggiest idea which means you do not remember or you cannot recall a certain event or a piece of information today's fog has been caused by warm and cold air colliding with each other this fog is made up of tiny particles of moisture you often see fog forming in the early morning or evening or as the temperature changes the subject of weather is a fascinating one and for the typical English person such as myself it is a subject that is often discussed in general day-to-day -day conversation The two words shown here may look similar but they are in fact very different the words perspective and prospective are often confused that is to say one is used instead of the other first of all the word perspective defines the way in which things are seen how an object appears depending on its size shape and relative distance from other things around it in drawing and painting perspective is used to give the illusion of depth and distance we can also use this word to express a person's view of the world as their point of view a person's perspective of the world the views and opinions held by us all come from our own perspective then there is the word prospective which means something that is expected or is expecting to be done in the future something that is likely to happen at a later date is prospective I have a prospective client coming to my office tomorrow so now there is no need to get these words confused ever again I have given you a clear perspective of what the differences are I have done this for you now and for all the prospective online students who will join me in the future can you see what I have here this is a saucepan full of boiling water the hot water is producing steam steam is produced when water vaporizes normally water vapor cannot be seen but it is possible to show it when extreme temperatures are used for example when hot vapor meets cool air 
This is one of the ways in which clouds are formed. The process is called evaporation. The word steam can be used in other ways. For example, a person can let off steam. This expression means that a person will release their tension and pent-up energy by doing something. The action is normally a physical one, such as going for a run, having a dance, or in extreme cases, screaming out loud. It would be fair to say that we all need to let off steam at some point. It's time to take a look at another part of English grammar, continuing the theme of punctuation that we started in the last Full English. Today we will take a look at the dreaded apostrophe. This particular punctuation mark is a controversial one, as its use has been widely disputed over the years. Even now there seems to be some confusion over how it should be used. In general English, the apostrophe serves two purposes. To show the possessive quality of something and to show that a word has been shortened or a sentence has been made shorter. In the possessive sense, the apostrophe shows that one thing belongs to another. For example, Duncan's pen, Jill's pencil, St Paul's cathedral. The apostrophe can come at the end of the possessive word. For example, the teacher's college is over there. A commonly confused use of the apostrophe comes with the word its. The apostrophe here shows the contraction of it is. It's my birthday today. When the apostrophe is not used, then the possessive tense is being expressed. A mouse has no fur on its tail. Another common mistake made with the apostrophe is to use it to show the plural of ordinary words. This is incorrect. Once again, the apostrophe is only used when you wish to show a possessive clause or the contraction of a word or sentence. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, uh, just a brief example of the sort of thing you can find on my YouTube channel and also across my website as well. Yes, I have a website, don't you know? Mm. So here it is. Oh. The moment we've all been waiting for. The moment that, well, I suppose a lot of people are now sitting in front of their computer screens, waiting very patiently, waiting <laughs> for something very special to happen because Mr. Steve is just around the corner. Are you ready to have Mr. Steve? on your screen are you well there is a special thing happening today because it is mr steve's birthday <laughs> so here he comes everyone it's the birthday boy himself it's mr steve hello everybody Hello, Mr. Steve. Mr. Duncan. Hi, Mr. Steve. You're Mr. Duncan. Hello. We we look like a couple of we oh. look we look like a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses. Do we? Yeah. What are those, Mr. Duncan? Jehovah's Witnesses. They are Mor Mormons. Oh, right. We do see them uh, knocking door to door, but we're not talking about religion. No, we're not talking about religion, even though we kind of are. Steve, can I just? We're say talking that? about my birthday. Steve. Yes. Can you just make yourself go a little higher? Because I want to show. Look, Ooh. 
this what's this this is what i bought for mr steve's birthday look oh it's mr steve's birthday present from me it's a lovely silk tie just for your birthday if you if you wear it like that you see everyone can see it oh yes over the shoulder over the shoulder very posh very very nice i don't like that very stylish a bit too flamboyant yes we've both got red ties and yes a beautiful tie well mine is purple mr duncan bought well mine's got purple in it mr duncan bought me this for my birthday as he just explained yes along with uh, many other presents yes. <laughs> because because steve <laughs> is well let's not forget let's let's get this right mm. because steve is well today he is the the birthday boy Yes, can you see it now? And what do birthday boys get? Um, lots of on their birthdays. Well, they get lots of presents, cards. Yes, keep going. May, maybe also cake. Cake. Oh, so so there is there is a nice cake there. Look, do you like that? Oh, how lovely! <laughs> how many candles are there on there, Mr. Duncan? Not enough. We don't want to. <laughs> hmm, typical. We're well, not going to say how old I am. No. Unless you've already told people, of course. Well, I haven't told anyone. It's your secret. A lady should never mention her age. Exactly. Yes. Never reveal your age. Um, and I won't. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that's obvious. I've had some lovely cards. Sh show, show us the cards. That Although you've... some of them are a bit damp. Yes. I, <laughs> I have already explained, Steve, that last night we had the worst rain, the heaviest rain that we've had ever well certainly since moving here it was like a biblical flood <laughs> it was we went to um we went to a a, a souvenir shop didn't we mr mm. duncan we went to much wenlock yesterday with my sister and my mother i mentioned this earlier i've already mentioned we had a lovely meal for for mr steve's pre birthday yes so we had a lovely time even though the weather was awful i was going to explain that we went into one souvenir shop and there was a, a model ark in there hmm. when i say ark i mean a boat as in noah's ark yes the, uh, and the, mr the, duncan said where there where there steve don't rush ahead the animals went in two by two you could have said that afterwards you i was see? going to explain that the ark of course in uh, the Old Testament, <laughs> if you believe that. One of the stories in there yeah. uh, talks about a giant flood and all the animals going in there to be to be rescued until the flood subsides. And Mr Duncan said, oh, we better buy one of those because we might need it later on tonight. Yes. And how right he was because we had water flowing down the back of the house like a river. I'm not I, joking. I've never seen anything like it. Never. But, and the field at the back of the house, the field... You can see actually where the the water has overwhelmed the land. Yes, and, and it's I've never seen anything like it. Well, they've had landslides in Wales. I really want I really want to show you what it looks like outside. I might take some video pictures later and then show them to you on Wednesday. But unfortunately, we can't do it today. So the live chat is up and running. Lots of people want to say happy birthday to Mr. Steve. Ooh. Thank you for all your birthday wishes. There's some some lovely emojis on there. Is that the correct phrase, Mr. Duncan? Emojis. Emo emoji. I've got some hearts. I've got some musical notes. I've got a cake. That looks like a, a microphone. And hearts of all different colours, shapes and sizes, flowers. Oh. Uh, thank you to everybody who's sending me birthday wishes. Hmm. Standing ovation, says one person. Yes. I haven't performed yet. No. Uh, but, yes, you normally get a standing ovation after you've performed. Uh, but, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Before I forget, Steve, we've had a few live donations as well. So let me just mention the live donations, even though I can't find them now. They've all vanished. <laughs> Does well, it add up to a million pounds, Mr. Duncan? Not yet. OK. Not that it matters. It doesn't have to. <laughs> Are you joking? It doesn't have to. Ignore what Steve says. I've had some lovely cards. Do you want... Well, I've had three. Right there. Right there, <laughs> Steve. Jimmy. Thank you very much, Jimmy, in Hong Kong, for your lovely donation live on the chat. Thank you very much to you. I also received one earlier as well. So sometimes I do miss your donations. I don't catch them 
yes thank you very much to jimmy and i'm sure there was another one as well let me just make sure because i don't want to forget anyone uh there was also there was also eric as well thank you very much eric for your lovely super sticker and also your donation on the live chat thank you very much so steve we are we are making an impact today i think so especially with our dress look at steve we look very smart we look like teachers don't we today yeah proper teachers well you always wear that yes. i look like a proper teacher not just like some person that's come in off the street steve today it is independence day of lithuania wow yes so i'm wearing my lithuanian watch today so <laughs> apparently this is a message I received a couple of days ago saying, Mr. Duncan, you must wear your Lith Lithuanian watch on Sunday. So is that great how people remember all these facts and, and little bits of information which we've given them over the years? Mm. Uh, and yes, you've contributed towards the uh, GDP of Lithuania. Yes. <laughs> okay. by buying it. Well, by what well, I did because I bought it for you, didn't yes. I? OK. Uh, but yes. <laughs> Fancy people ba remembering that. That's Basically, it was a present from Mr. Steve. It was, which we've explained before. <laughs> we we do. Look, I'm sorry, Steve, but we really do look like Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> do we? We oh, do. Okay. We, I look like I should be going from door to door, knocking on people's doors and but asking them if they if they've seen the light. Whatever they believe, one thing's for certain: they always look very happy. So. Um, Okay. I think sometimes if you believe something, then it makes you happy. You've never seen an unhappy Mormon. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I've never seen an. Well, I did see a Jehovah's Witness once when I was very young. Used to come to the door. I was in rented accommodation. OK. And uh, they must have thought that I was vulnerable to suggestion you, you, <laughs> and i was all i'm always very steve, nice and friendly ooh, to right, steve steve you don't have to so I'd, I'd let people come in and I'd, I'd i always like to hear people talk of what they believe what they want to say and uh but they there was one particular they they always come in pairs don't they okay and he looked very ill very tired very ill and i think going out on the streets every night <laughs> uh was uh, i've tried that making him very tired <laughs> Um, there's many a night I've been out on the streets. I'm envious of people who who, who are happy like that, who b believe in something okay. devoutly, and uh, want to spread the message. Um, yeah, a bit of jealousy there. I think there, there is something you mentioned though. You, you you do often appear vulnerable. I think when people see mm -hmm. Steve, when people see Steve, they see an, a vulnerable person, a person who they might be able to. Well exploit i'm not i'm not very guarded with my emotions no I this just, is true whatever i think i usually say steve is like an open book with his emotions whereas i i'm quite closed a lot of people think i'm quite closed with my real feelings so so when i'm happy and joyous and having fun especially yesterday i was eating i was eating custard out of the out of the the little serving cup much to your sister's horror his I, table manners his table manners were very poor i must be honest my table manners are not very good sometimes i get very excited though i get so excited when there is food nearby so mr duncan was uh, taking food out of, off my plate putting the things he didn't like onto mine like the raisins mm, i don't like raisins uh you ate at least half of mum's food but i well your mum gave it to me i know I, that sounds like i stole her food i didn't yes because yes so and then and then uh, the the ps de, de, de la resistance okay is you licking your knife now anybody watching table manners normally uh you do not lick the knife yes. do you it, Mr. Duncan look, licks his knife. Steve, it could have been worse. I, I could have licked my plate. And I've done that before in public. Trust me. For a joke. Oh, it's John McEnroe's birthday today as well. Is the it, famous tennis player. Is it John McEnroe's yes. birthday? Apparently, a lot of women of a certain age have certain desires and dreams about John McEnroe. 
I think he was well a tennis player or is that Jimmy Connors I think I'm confusing uh, it with Jimmy Connors uh, Jimmy but Connors John McEnroe used to lose his temper all the he time was famous for losing his temper you can't be serious you you can't be serious man that was in the ball was in man he used to smash his rackets didn't he on the on the tennis court he was a very angry man and uh, he used to get reprimanded and it would have a what do they do if you do that they they do they take points off you in tennis or I, I think they, they you get a reprimand yes I think it's a foul isn't it they call it a foul I think you can be um I think he's he's been uh, thrown out of matches before now yes. for his behavior so it is John McEnroe's birthday what do table manners mean uh, when we talk about table manners we are talking about the way you behave at the table when you are eating so you do things in a certain way so maybe you don't you don't eat with your mouth open blah, 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 like that <laughs> or maybe you don't lick the knife or maybe you you if you, you don't get food around your mouth and that's something I often do so when I enjoy food I often get food around my mouth so all of the rules that you must follow when you are eating they are called the table manners, the well, way you, the way you must behave at the table. Just slightly different in different cultures, of course. Uh, if you eat with a knife and fork, you've got to make sure you're using the correct knife and fork oh, yeah. for each oh, course. I, I always make mistakes. Uh, I always make mistakes. I, sometimes you go to one of these very very posh meals, Steve, and, and they have lots of silver. Lots of silverware, lots of cutlery on the table. And I never know which ones to pick up first. Outside in. You work from the outside in. Outside in. So you take... You should know that, Mr. Duncan. You take the knife and fork that's on the outside and then move inwards. As each course comes along. So if the three sets of knives and forks, then there'll be different sizes. That you Then you just use the first one to the first course. Yeah. And, of course, the other one is... The, the side plate. OK. Your side plate, if you're in a table with a lot of people, is always the one on the left of you. And some people will always say, oh, is that my plate or your plate? It's the <laughs> one on the left. Uh, and, of course, you've got to eat delicately, haven't you? You have. And, uh, and not shovel the food into your mouth. No, you have to eat slowly. Polite. Talk with your mouth uh, empty, empty, not with it full. No. Uh, you know, table manners, just was, what is pleasant, what is acceptable, yes, well, that won't uh, draw attention to yourself in polite company. OK, then. Thank you, Julie G, for your donation as well. We've had a lovely donation, another live donation. I a, think they're all for me, actually. I think they're birthday presents for me, but Mr Duncan's going to keep them all. That's very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Also, I was going to say something else then, but I've completely forgotten what it was. <laughs> We're going to look at some words today, Steve, connected to birthdays. So when someone celebrates their birthday, you might give them a present. Oh, it looks as if Steve has received some cards. I have. OK, don't get too distracted by the live chat. Let's have a look at Steve's cards. I always get distracted by the live chat. I have noticed. Here's the one from my mother. Oh, isn't that lovely? There, there we go. Is. So that says son. Oh, look at that. There it is. Sun. So but th the interesting thing about this card is it's actually handmade. Yes, it's handmade. That card is. Um, I don't know whether my mother made it, but it's handmade. Yes. So it says sun. However, this this type of card reminds me of the sort of card that you would give to a teenage boy. That's it. But it doesn't matter because, I, you know, it doesn't. Uh, and look at that. That's a BMW. Oh, okay. In red, uh, in red, uh, and it's got a, a set of tyres with it as well, hmm. because obviously I'll be driving around like a lunatic. And a toolbox. And a toolbox for when it goes wrong. Um, uh, um, um. Yes, I drive. I would be a bit too flashy. That car would would be for me. Talking of cars, uh, Steve. Guess yes. what? Belarusia has sent a picture of. 
one of your favorite oh cars. oh look at that is that now that i think that's Ooh. an is that is that a top of the range that looks like a high high range that's uh i think that's a, a mercedes cls nice it says i it, think you call oh, yes, that. it at the top does it oh yes it is it's a cls so that is uh based on a saloon car and okay. mercedes decided to make the saloon car look a bit more flashy a mm. bit more coupe like so they shortened the doors, made the windows look, uh, sorry, made the windows look smaller, slopey back. When that first came out, that was a, a, a very, um, it caused a lot of, quite a stir when that was mm. first released, that car, because yes. it was a very striking car. I must admit that. From, is... And I remember years ago, you, you said, uh, when you first saw one, you said, what a lovely car. Yes, that is a beautiful car. It's what car manufacturers do a lot of now. They take a, a saloon car and they will make it look like a coupe and add a bit more style to it. So that is from Belarusia. Thank you, Belarusia. When when, when do I take delivery? Yes. Uh, is what I want to know. They That 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 particular car is probably about 10 years old, I would say. Um, at least they've, they've restyled it since then. Mm. But it, the, the, the new style CLS isn't as effective as that original mm. one. It that is. one was the one that really caused a lot of quite a stir when it was mm. released. A very interesting. And in fact, they set a whole new trend Mercedes did with that particular uh, thing where you take a saloon car and turn it into a into a very swoopy curvy sexy looking coupe yes oh that's a good now i think that is a good description of that car yes it's sexy yeah a, a car can be sexy can't it but that is a car that is 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 uh it's, it's designed for people who want four doors but they think a saloon car is too boring mm. so they want something with a bit more style mm. and that's that end of the market and mm. of course BMW did it and then everybody else followed and copied and had, did the same sort of thing. Uh, it's Mr. Steve's birthday today. Do you have any more cards? Here's a card from my sister, Ooh. which is a, a, a beautiful card, which is telling me uh, she knows I like gardening. So that is, uh, is saying go out into the garden. But also, uh, oh, no, that what that is saying is that I've, I was gardening and now I've gone inside for a drink. Yes. <laughs> So it looks as if Steve has has taken a rest because he's getting older, you see. So he's had to leave his wheelbarrow in the garden and he's had to go into the house to have a little rest. Talking of which, Steve, when you are celebrating your birthday, people might say things to you, mightn't they? They might. They might say things to you when your birthday arrives. Well, first of all, let's mention that it is, well, it is Mr. Steve's birthday. So happy birthday once again to you, Steve. OK. <laughs> but we can also say, well, first of all, we can just say happy birthday. Happy birthday to Mr. Steve. Happy birthday Thank to you. you. Also, we can say happy birthday to you as a song, which, of course, we can't sing because we will get a, a copyright strike. Will we? We will get a copyright strike. So we have Believable. to be We have to be careful what we sing on YouTube. Or a person might just say best wishes to you on your birthday. Best yes. wishes on your birthday. Best wishes to you. So it's a nice way of saying congratulations. It's a nice friendly way of wishing someone well on their birthday. Best wishes to you you might also say all the best all the best so all the best on your birthday all the best for you if a person is leaving the place they work maybe they are retiring you might wish them well you might say all the best so it's a nice friendly way of saying i hope things go well for you in the future so it is a nice thing to say on someone's birthday, but also you can use this phrase generally if someone is going away or maybe you won't be seeing them for a long time. You can say, can I wish you all the best in all your new job? Yes. All the best for your holiday, all the best for your wedding. Mm. If you're not going. Yes. 
course, the other thing you can say is many happy returns. You can say that. Yeah. No doubt you. <laughs> you can say that, Steve. And guess what? Oh, look at that. Many happy returns. Many happy returns of, of the, the day of the day, which, of course, means that that time will come around again and again and again. So when yes. we say many happy returns, what we are saying is we hope that you get to live long enough to see yes. another another birthday or many more birthdays so lots of happy birthdays in the future yes. so many happy returns of your birthday we hope that you get to see lots more <laughs> special days like this one because it's mr steve's birthday you'd normally just shorten that though to many happy returns you wouldn't normally write of the day afterwards mm. people death that's the full term isn't it yes. you would normally say many happy returns mm. many happy uh, returns for mr steve because it is your birthday today oh my are you excited because you don't seem very excited even I though I? I tell you what though i'd be excited if i had a ford mustang on the drive I know why as well, because it was so dramatic last night. Well, yes. Storm Dennis. Last night, rain falling all night, floods well, around. We um, had a power cut. Have you mentioned that? Yes. So we had a power cut. We had to sit in the dark, didn't we? For about four hours, five hours. Talking to each other. And you can imagine how stressful that was. So it was just Steve and me sitting together in the dark, just a candle candles keeping us a light keep so we could see each other in the dark and and all we did was talk and what did we say we, we wanted a cup of tea yes uh <laughs> and we said uh, well we have got a, a a camping a gas camping stove yes so a, a small po portable camping stove where you put a gas cylinder in and you can use it for camping effectively and we bought it about seven years ago when we had a power cut here before and we've never had to use it since no because our cooker uh, is powered by electricity mm. not gas it's electric so um we kept saying well the, i'm sure the electricity will come on soon mm. we won't bother getting that camping stove out mm. uh, and then you went on the internet and it said that the power wouldn't be back on for at least another couple of hours mm. so you said oh don't get it out because as soon as you get it out the power will come back on mm. then you saw the message saying it's going to be two hours we get the camping stove out i light it put this connect the little cylinder as soon as i lit it the power came on yes in fact you were you were boiling some water i was boiling some water to make a cup of tea and we could have waited and then we could have used the kettle and then suddenly the electricity came back on exactly Typical. exactly how i said it and we said how dare they put the electricity back on when we've got the camping stove out so we couldn't even enjoy our emergency cup of tea in the dark because then, because the electricity came back on but then later on uh, uh we were going to bed but it was we could hear this rain lashing down and we looked outside and there was a torrent yeah. and then i went up upstairs and there was water dripping through near one of the windows the, and then more water dripping in in the, in the in the conservatory area yes so we had leaks water leaks we had to put buckets underneath yes and, and but it was flowing past the house like a river there was a river flowing in the back garden and it was going past the house and around the side of the house past the studio yes. and then into the front garden so and all the water was going i went outside with a torch in my wellington boots you did you got very excited in fact uh but i wanted to unblock the uh, the drain pipes because the water was coming flowing over the drain pipes and not going down because it was full of moss mm. that had fallen off the roof yes. so i wanted to clear the drain pipes and i got very wet didn't i mr duncan but I, it's quite exciting uh going out there when mm. when when you've got extreme weather but you were it's panicking a bit. you were panicking a bit i wasn't well. panicking but you, i was concerned steve was running that steve was literally was concerned he was running around the house so screaming like a lady i wasn't don't be silly mr duncan i was just managing the situation uh mr duncan would have done nothing and we'd have woken up in the morning with, with water all over the floor here we go uh i saw a mouse mr duncan where 
well because around the side of your studio there's lots of little mouse holes where they must live and hibernate in the winter and the water was pouring down these holes there's the poor mice were <laughs> well i saw one mouse i don't know how many are living near mr duncan's studio but yes. We need a cat, I think, to get rid of them. Why? I saw this mouse so, with my torch well, running, so, in, so swimming you, in the water. So you want to kill the little mice that live nearby and they're doing no harm to us. You can't get rid of them. They're everywhere. I know. Well, the, the, we're in the country. You don't have to kill them. I, I don't understand why people move to the countryside and then they complain about the animals that are all around them. If you don't want to see animals, go and live in the city and you can live amongst well, one particular type of animal. I mean, human beings, by the way. Human beings. Abril says, what kind of cake do I like? I would say chocolate. chocolate but I also like um, almond cake. Uh, what's that one? Um, Bakewell. Bakewell tart. Yes. Steve likes to have a tart now and again. I've had one for years. A Bakewell tart. So that is a, a layer of pastry with a sort of marzy uh, sort of um, it's got almonds in it. Mm. Almond uh, sort of uh, base mm. um, sweet with with a layer of, of, of jam mm -hmm. and then some icing on top. Mm. But chocolate cake. It has I a very any cake. It really. has a very nutty, nutty taste. Yes. But, uh, but, but basically anything sweet. To be honest, anything. Your sister bought something ever so nice for yes, you. Yes, she did. Yeah, let's have a look. And uh, look at this. Look at that. So this is this is actually very heavy. It's made of stone. It's a pe piece of stone. Yes. Uh, but but on the front you can see some farmyard animals. All of your family know that we love animals. Yes. Especially farmyard animals. So there you can see a little pig. A, a cow and also a sheep as well all looking over a stone wall and that is used uh either in the kitchen or on the table mm. for putting hot dishes on yes to protect your table yeah so you put it down on your table and uh, and then you put your dishes on mm. top of it i suppose but, you could describe uh, this as a coaster well, uh, no, or, that or a table or a table mat, uh, like a table mat. Yes, something to protect uh, the table from the heat. We did have some little coasters that came with it. Coaster is something that you put your drink on. Mm. So uh, there it is. It's quite nice. But the weight, I can't believe how heavy this is. So thank you very much to Janice. In fact, she said to me this morning, I nearly didn't give it to you because she, I bought them and wanted to keep them myself. Ah, uh, but. Uh, very nice. Very th so thank you very much for the present. You use that as a weapon. And don't forget, don't forget also. Yeah, I had a tie. I bought a tie for Mr. Steve and also for Valentine's Day. I got some lovely chocolates, didn't I, as well? I got some as well. I got some chocolates. So there it is. Mr. Steve's new tie. That Which I should wear at work. Oh, no, don't put, I don't like it too tight. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, because that's, that's not what I've heard. Makes my uh, makes my neck feel restricted oh it feels like you're being strangled <laughs> yes i used to always do the button up on my shirt but i don't anymore um anyway another one. Oh, another word another we can say happy greetings to you happy greetings happy greetings to you birthday greetings so quite often you. quite often you will write this down so we don't normally say happy greetings to you you might write it down in a birthday card or in a letter so can i say happy greetings to you for your birthday or greetings to you for your birthday you are sending a special hello something nice for your birthday i, I think steve is trying to be i'm trying to elevate myself so we, people can see this lovely can, can, can we let can we let the viewers in on a secret what's that mr steve is standing on top of something to make himself taller <laughs> only because you've got the can the the the, the, the candle the uh, the camera angled to make yourself look taller you can't make someone look taller with a camera trust me anyway yes you can some more phrases he knows all the tricks of the trade to make himself look better it is true i've learned all the ways all the lights on you or the or the most flattering light 
if light is flattering. This is the same light, by the way. Flattering light is, is a light that uh, irons out, gets rid of all your blemishes. Yes. And makes you look younger well, and uh, more attractive. In, in the professional term, we call it a beauty light. Have you ever heard of that? I have. So, so it is a technical expression for light that is very flattering to a person's face. But when you're out and about, if you're in a restaurant, for example, and you've got those annoying overhead lights, those spotlights, yeah. and if one of those is on your head, mm. you would say that was unflattering light Bad. because it casts shadows mm. on your face. If you've got lights from above... Uh, whereas if you're sitting opposite a window, the light's flooding in and evenly lighting your face. Mm. And you say, describe that as a flattering light, mm. a light that causes shadows, mm. a harsh overhead light yes. is unflattering and makes you look uh, older. And nobody wants that. Well, it, 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 what it does, it, it, it highlights all of the, the lines and also the shape of your face. So all of the shadows will appear. Yes. However, if you have light in front of you that is diffused, then you will look like this. You will look handsome and beautiful, just like me and Mr. Steve. Ah. Another one. Oh, here's a good one. You can also say... Warm wishes on your birthday. Warm, warm wishes. Warm wishes. So the wishes are kind, true. They are sincere. You are sending your warm wishes or, of course, you can say warmest wishes. Yes. Can I send you my warmest wishes on your birthday? So, yes, it's, it's a that nice would way. be from one friend to another, maybe. Hmm, I think so. Interesting. When do you put love in a card to somebody? Blah, blah, blah. Happy birthday, love from. Or happy Christmas, love from. That's interesting because some people automatically put that on to everybody. And mm. other people uh, only use the word love to maybe their partner, mm. family members. But if you've got a, a good friend, you might put love from. Mm. Interesting, because I had a card from somebody mm. who is in the choir that I'm in. OK. And uh, normally she always sends me a birthday card every year and she normally just puts from. So if you just put happy birthday from mm -hmm. and then the name, that's quite formal. Yes. That's a very formal way of putting it. But this year she put love from. Oh, I, she didn't, and love doesn't mean doesn't mean love in terms of romantic love. Mm. In that case, if it's a friend that sends you a card and puts love from, it just means they're very they're very fond of you. Yes, it doesn't mean that you know. I didn't read that in the card as meaning there was some emotional love. She doesn't. She doesn't want to marry you. She doesn't want to have a relationship with me. Just, but it was just just a nice thing to say sometimes yes. when you yes. mean that you really like somebody. So I th I think quite often with women, you might see women sending birthday cards to each other, and they might put love in the yes. card. Yes. However, <laughs> if a man sends a birthday card to another man. First of all, I don't think that happens very often. I don't think men normally send birthday cards to each other unless, of course, they are. I don't have I've never had uh, a birthday card off a man. Unless I was. Well, I know I haven't. <laughs> so, uh, no, you're right there. And if you did. Oh, I think I have. But if you did, it would just say from. Yes. And then the name. Yes. You, you might get Christmas cards from a man. Yes. So a man might send a Christmas card to another man and say, oh, Merry Christmas, mate. See, see you next year. However, you don't normally send a birthday card to another man unless, of course, it's a relative. It's very unusual. And couples might say if, 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 the, if, the, if the female in the relationship wrote the card hmm. and it was one couple to another couple they might put love from mm. on that so if you're if you're romantically involved be you a man woman woman man man woman man woman man man woman dog man woman octopus dog man woman then you might you might do that what <laughs> 
I think people, uh, somebody has did marry their dog, didn't they, in this country <laughs> okay. recently? We have to be careful what we say I think, here. I think they so, sorry, did. You, Steve said that, not me. No, you, I think it's happened. Sorry, you, it, it may have happened, but we have to be careful on YouTube. I'm Why? sorry. I'm sorry, YouTube. It was Steve that said that, not me. Please don't take my partnership away, please. So yes, some people might want to marry their dog, but but we don't we don't support it here on YouTube because. Well, YouTube might get a little bit funny about it, you see. I think it, you can legally do it, I think, in some parts of the world. Yeah. I don't know. Not here, though. I'm sure it was somebody, maybe it was in America, I don't know. I think well, that, it was probably in America. Yeah, it probably was in America. But anyway. Next, go on. Oh, my goodness. Mr Duncan, the, what do you want to say did next? Did you see what happened then? Mr Steve had nothing else to say. I can't believe it. I can't believe that just happened. So when you have a birthday party, because some people do have birthday parties, don't they, Steve? I'm not having one. You might ask them to blow out the candles and make a wish. You might ask them to blow out the candles and make a wish. But why? What, what is that for, Steve? Why do we do that? It's just tradition. OK. But there is a reason for it. And maybe you'll tell us. Yes. Well, <laughs> you blow out the candles and you make a wish as you yes. blow out the candles. So you are doing something that hopefully will bring good luck in the future. So it's a bit like, I don't know, it's a bit like something that might be superstition even. So I'm sure in the past people were superstitious about when they blow out the candle. And I wouldn't be surprised if those two things are actually connected somehow. So you blow out the candle and I suppose before electricity, you would blow out the candle at night. But maybe before you blew out the candle, maybe you said a prayer or you made a wish so you would survive the night without dying, maybe. So it's a bit yeah. extreme. But I'm just thinking. No, I'm thinking out loud. This is how my brain works. Maybe you need to do some research. Yes, well, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's what we uh, traditionally do. Uh, certainly here in the West. I don't know whether it happens in other countries. You have a, somebody brings you a ca <laughs> your, your cake to the table uh, with all the candles lit. Steve. And it, we've done that to I've done that to you, haven't yeah. I? And then you blow the candles out and make a wish. Steve, people have birthday cakes in other countries. I know, but I don't know. The question I'm asking is, is there a tradition in your country to blow out the candles and say, make a wish? Yes. I don't know if that's in every country in the world I, well, I, or I, just in certain countries. Yes. So I'm sure there is food involved. I have a feeling that there has to be food. Come on, if you're having a birthday party, you have to have food and there has to be a big cake and maybe oh. some candles as well. So Arth Nesta says that they have three wishes. Oh. So we only get one wish here. We only get one. So where are you, Nesta? 7124. Uh, which country are you in? We only get... So that we will, yes. We, we can have three wishes. So what would your... Steve, OK, so imagine now... You, you have a cake in front of you with lots of candles and you are going to blow those candles. You are going to give it the biggest blow ever. Ah, I so, know what you're going so you to have say. So you have to breathe in. You have to have lots of puff. So you have to let that big puff out and blow those candles completely out so they're not lit anymore. What would your wish be? I wouldn't tell you because... When you make a wish, you have to keep it to yourself. Oh, I see. You have to keep that wish to yourself. Otherwise, it will never come true. Mm. So you make a wish, but you make it to yourself. Uh, because if you blurt it out to everybody, mm. the energy is lost mm. of that of that wish. So if you make that wish, it goes somewhere into the universe okay. and then will eventually come back to you. But if you tell everybody, it dissipates the 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 energy of the wish. OK, <laughs> it's like sometimes it's like when they say you shouldn't always tell everybody what your plans are for the future, because when you do that, you somehow lose the energy mm. uh, of, of what's happening uh, in that in that wish or that desire or that goal. Mm. 
So, so, so I'm not going to tell you what my wish is, but you can probably guess. Okay. It's got four wheels and uh, it'd probably be in red and would have a, a, an eight cylinder engine oh. uh, and it would maybe come from uh, the other side of the world. Okay, so we are talking about a Ford Mustang. I, I, that probably would be on my I, wish list. I think, it, well, if you only have one wish, you don't have a list, unfortunately. This isn't Amazon. Oh, right in Malaysia here. Uh, oh, hello to Malaysia. Where? Oh, so I stayed in my university's hostel and my parents had just paid me a visit oh, and yes. brought me <laughs> brought me a cake and I blew out I blew out the candles and made a wish. This is tradition in Malaysia. Right, so there we go. So there we go. So, so I think a lot of countries around the world have a very similar thing with food and maybe a cake. Even in China, I remember when I was in China, I know, I know, we can't get through one of these live streams without me mentioning China. Right. When, when I was in China, my first birthday that I celebrated in China, I had three birthday parties on the same day. So I had to go to three birthday parties and I had to have, I actually blew out three birthday cakes. Did on, you have any puff left? I, I was completely out of puff. I had no more breath left inside me because I was blowing, blowing, continually blowing all day on my birthday. Thank you, Nesta. Nesta's from Malaysia, uh, from Argentina. Hello, Argentina. So where you get three wishes on from on your birthday cake. So I'm going to Argentina because you can you get three times as many wishes as you do here in the UK. So next year, when it's Steve's birthday this time next year, by the way, Mr. Steve will be older next year. It's a big one next Sorry, year. Pardon? Steve is having a big birthday next year because it's a big age next year, isn't it? It's 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 an age. You mustn't think of age. Big. Uh, it's a big Cecilia Geordie <laughs> has watched all your live videos. Hmm? From 2016, 17, 18 and 19. Yes. Well, I started making Love them. I started making my live streams in 2016. That's when I started doing the live lessons. However, I did start making my videos in 2006. So this year, it is actually my 14th year on YouTube. When you watch, uh, did you binge watch uh, Mr. Duncan's live streams, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Cecilia? That's what you do when you when you watch say a television series mm. and there are lots of programs episodes episodes and you watch all of them at once over over a long period of time say in one night mm. uh you call it binge watching mm. it's like eating lots of food you binge on food it means you eat a lot mm. over a long period of time yes to consume something in a large amount over a certain period normally a short period of time so maybe you watch a TV show, but you watch 10 episodes in, in one night. So you sit there. Do you know which TV show started binge watching? It was, was it Breaking Bad? It was. Breaking Bad was the TV show that's responsible for binge watching. It was yeah. the first TV show that people sat down and watched lots and lots of episodes of, including us. Because yes. you watch one episode of a program yeah. and it leaves you with a cliffhanger at the end. Yes. So a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain that, Mr. A Duncan? Cliffhanger is uh, an ending that has suspense. So there is something that keeps you in suspense. You want to find out what happens next. You can't wait. So at the end of an episode of, for example, Breaking Bad, Walter White is in his little lab and then some suddenly there's a knock at the door and Walter he wasn't expecting anyone to come round so there is a knock at the door Walter looks surprised and he, who is it and he says I wonder who it is Mr it's, Duncan's making that up no I'm not making it up I'm just trying to <laughs> are you ex well we, I think you've explained cliffhanger so something yeah. that leaves you in suspense so walter white is wondering who is at the door and he's got his gas mask on because he's making he's making crystal meth in his lab 
so he goes i wonder who is at the door and that's it then suddenly the the episode ends that doesn't sound like much of a cliffhanger mr you, you want to find out but it might have been some gangsters or yeah, maybe or maybe gus fring a cliffhanger a cliffhanger would have <laughs> a cliffhanger a cliffhanger would have been the door burst open and somebody came in there with a gun and then it, the credits went up Yes. That would be a cliffhanger, not just a knock at the door. That doesn't sound very exciting. I might think, oh, well, I'll wait till next week before watching the next episode. No, I would want to know who was at the door. Anna, I, Anna says. Especially with, if it's Walt, Walter White. He never got anyone coming round to his house who was nice. They were always trying to kick the door down or smash the windows and steal his money that he kept under his floorboards. My favourite episode of Breaking Bad is when when Walter White put all of the money in the washing machine because it got wet and he had to dry all of the money in the washing machine and there's a wonderful shot that the camera appears to be inside the washing machine looking out and you can see the money going around and and that's another reason why I loved Breaking Bad because of the the cinematography so the way it was photographed I used to I used to love watching it just to to see how how it was actually filmed wow. yes uh, beatrice says uh, as 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 also mm -hmm. mentioned that in argentina you have three wishes before you blow out the candles oh good and anna says of course aladdin uh, the genie uh grants you three wishes hmm. when he comes out of the 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 the, 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 the urn or the pot Oh, what what would what what does the what does what it's a, does it's the, actually it's it's a lamp a lamp a lamp yes Aladdin uh, is a genie that lives in yes. a lamp and you rub the lamp and out pops Aladdin have you have and you a, get three uh, I know what you're going to say Mr have Duncan. you ever had Aladdin Don't, Mr Duncan have you ever had Aladdin uh, and you get three wishes so Argentina gets three wishes just like Aladdin grants you three wishes. Yeah. So Aladdin, oh, you, yes. you have to pick him up and you have to give him a good rub. So as you rub him, he will suddenly <laughs> appear in front of you in a big puff of smoke. And he will say, hello, my name is Aladdin and I will give you three wishes. Thank you very much for releasing me from the magic lamp. That sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, Theo Dang says, after blowing out the candles and making a wish, do people usually push your head down into the birthday cake? What? They well, might do. I've never had my head. <laughs> I've had my head pushed down. That would be fun. In many directions. Maybe they would splat the cake in your face. Mm. That doesn't sound very nice. And also the candles might go into your eyes. You might actually lose your eyesight because of the candles going into your eyes so i don't like the sound of that no i don't think you should ever push someone's face into a birthday cake nesta says <laughs> it's actually difficult to think of three wishes before blowing out a candle i should imagine it would be i mean one is one is bad enough you what you'd want time wouldn't you if somebody's just suddenly thrust a birthday cake under your nose is that your stomach uh, yes my stomach's rumbling <laughs> I'm hungry uh, and, and ask you to make three. I mean, one wish. You could probably think of one wish. I can think of quickly. I can think of two now. But, ne but needing to think of three, that puts you on the spot. That gives you a bit of pressure mm. to think of it. And what happens if you don't have? Yeah, I can understand that, Nesta. Mm. I like a bit of pressure. Uh, sir, which TV series do you like the most? At the moment, we have been watching The Expanse, science fiction. We like The we Expanse. Also, we also like Better Call Saul, which is kind of connected to Breaking Bad. And that starts soon, once again. It's, it's a bit boring. It's, it's back. He thinks it's boring. It's very I, plodding. I like it. I like, I like Better Call Saul. In some ways, it's better than Breaking Bad because it has some, some interesting aspects of, of the past and also the present. So I quite like that way of telling a story where you are in the past, but also sometimes you are in the present. So I quite like that. So that's what we're watching at the moment. Two TV shows, The Expanse and also 
better call Saul. Uh, Pat Chu says, uh, what is Aladdin? You're, yeah, we've explained that. It's a genie that lives in a lamp. That's his name. Uh, and uh, Disney. RHS says, I am Aladdin. What do you wish? Yes, D Disney. There was a recent live action remake of the original Disney classic Aladdin and Will Smith believe it or not Will Smith was the genie why not why not indeed <laughs> he always rubs me up the wrong way ah ha Mr Duncan you're yeah. not a fan of Will Smith are you Mr Duncan he's not uh, <laughs> oh. he's not your most popular actor popular He's, he's not the you don't, you're not a fan. You're not a fan of Will Smith. No, I don't you? mind Will Smith, but he's in too many films. <laughs> can we have <laughs> can we have someone says, else? Vladimir says, "I'm from." I thought you said Venus, <laughs> a Vil, Vilnius. Thanks for oh, Vladimir's from uh, v, uh, Vilnius, Vilnius, yes. Vilnius. I keep wondering. I'm, I'm I'm just thinking of the planet so, Venus. Are you okay there? <laughs> You're not having a stroke, are you? Oh, yes. This is the watch, you see. This watch has come all the way from Lithuania. The capital of Lithuania is what? And... Well, go on. I'm guessing it's Vilnius. Vilnius. <laughs> if it isn't, we're going to look really stupid. <laughs> we are. <laughs> this Lithuanian watch is... Well, first of all, it's from Lithuania. And also, it's the Independence Day of yes. Lithuania today, apparently. So, uh, will you can will somebody confirm for us that Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania, <laughs> just so that we don't look stupid? My stomach is really rumbling. That's because I've only had breakfast today hmm. and a couple of biscuits, and uh, it's six hours since I had last had anything to eat. Steve, there are some good phrases here. When we get older, no one wants to get older. However, there are many ways of getting older and still staying happy. So I always think, and I think Steve agrees with me, getting older is not necessarily a bad thing. As you get older, I suppose you learn more things, you become wiser. Well, in theory, you become wiser. However, there is a lovely phrase in English. We can say that you are another year older, but not any wiser. Yes, that's said as a, as a sort of a humorous comment. As a joke. I'm a year older, but I'm not any wiser. Yes. And so, the, the inference there is that you keep repeating the same mistakes. I've learnt nothing. You always did when you were younger. I've learnt nothing from life. Relationships, <laughs> particularly. Yes. Um, so I like that one. Another year older, but not any wiser. So you keep making the same mistakes again and again. Oh, here's a yes. good one. Yes, yeah. Palmyra, Vilnius is indeed the capital of Lithuania. Oh. So we made an educated guess that paid off. We escaped. Yes. We escaped the humiliation of looking like a couple of divs. Uh, Perenzes, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, says that... Um, if we ever want a cup of Turkish coffee, which we have had. We've had Turkish coffee. When and we went to Turkey. And Turkish tea as well. It's very strong. Mm. I think it's a bit like... Um, Espresso. I think, yes. So, well, we can go to London. Oh. Presnes uh, has, must have a coffee shop or something. Oh. How exciting. We haven't been to London for, for decades. Pre Pre Princess, do you have... A coffee shop in London that might be a good excuse for going down to London this is something I'd like to do yes. this year when the weather gets better I would like to go down to London and we could do we could go together and do a special live lesson in London but also we could also go to the princess and have a cup of Turkish coffee that would uh, that would boost our energy I like the sound of that uh, Brilliant. Will Smith. Yes, because Will Smith used to be in a, in a comedy show, didn't he, before he became a famous, serious actor. He used to be in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That's was... right. So he was he was quite funny in that. I yeah. used to quite like watching it. 
I'm not a uh, fan of Will Smith. And it, I quite I, like him. I, I, you have to be careful nowadays, though. This is the problem. So if you say you don't like a black actor, you are instantly a racist. But I just don't like Will Smith. He annoys me. I don't know why. There's something sort of smug and smirky about him. I don't know why. But he's it's confident. It's not he's, because he's black, OK? He's just a very confident <laughs> yeah. person. It is possible to dislike someone. Well, I mean, well, you've drawn attention to it. Now, I'm not. Mr. I'm just. Duncan. I'm just. Yes, but we live in 2020. I don't. Know, I don't know if you've noticed, Steve, but we live in a world where everyone is yes. looking to be outraged. A coffee shop in Tooting. <gasps> That's it. We're on right, our way. We're, we're going, writing that we're down. We're going now. Come on, Steve. Let's go now. Yep. Yeah, it would take us about two and a half hours to drive there. I don't suppose you're open today, though. No. We can get a train. We could, but ah, but we can't because we've got travel disruption. <gasps> all over the UK because of Storm Dennis. There are no trains. The planes weren't taking up. They cancelled lots of flights. Oh, my God. And probably there are no trains either. No trains. And uh, my sister drove back from here last night and uh, there was a tree right across the road. Oh, so it, did it block the road? Yes, it blocked the road. So what did your sister do? Did she, did well, she try to drive over it? There was a small gap by the ditch and she just managed to drive round i told her to go on the motorway she drove her lovely she decided to go the back roads and nearly got flattened by a tree she drove her lovely expensive car into a ditch well not into a ditch she managed to drive round jamelia says will smith is one of my favorite actors he yes. just he just doesn't do it for me i'm sorry he doesn't do it for me i just i just find him slightly I don't know what I always remember reading an article with Will Smith and all he kept talking about was wanting to rule the world and being the president of the USA. Which he I did th say that. I once. thought I thought it was a little just slightly arrogant. That's all. But but I just just when I see a movie with Will Smith in the other one, The Rock. I don't know what the appeal of The Rock is. I haven't seen The Rock. The Rock. No, it, it's an actor. Oh, it's I thought it's a, a film. It's a, it, it is a film as well. There is a film called The Rock with Sean Connery and I think it's Nicolas Cage. Is it Nicolas Cage? Uh, but also, but also The Rock is a wrestler. He used to be a wrestler and now he's an actor and he seems to be in a new movie every week. Every week there seems to be a new movie starring The Rock. But I, I just find him a very horrible presence on screen. And it's not because he's a wrestler. I don't have anything against wrestlers before anyone gets outraged. Oh, Mr. Duncan, you don't like wrestlers. Are you anti-wrestler? No, I'm not anti-wrestler. You're just having an opinion. I just I just I, ju I just find him slightly annoying when he's on screen. Well, some, pe some people say that about me. Friend <laughs> says when when we come to London. Hmm? Uh, when we announce it, assuming we do, then remind us, because we'll probably forget, remind us that you've got this coffee shop in Tooting and we will make a trip. Tan K. For a cup of Turkish coffee. It is Tan K's birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Tan. Tan K. Happy birthday. Is there, is there anybody watching today who is also is their birthday today? John McEnroe. No, who's watching? Who's well, John McEnroe watching? He might be. He might be sitting there now with his tennis racket in his hand. I like Will Smith. Holding his balls and saying, you can't be serious, man. You call yourself an English teacher, man. And he throws his tennis racket at his computer screen. And uh, Tan says... Uh, uh, travel to Malaysia to meet your fans. We've been to Malaysia many We've times. Been to Malaysia many times, but I not for many years. I know Malaysia very well. The last time I was there was in 2014. Beautiful place, uh, Penang, Penang, and also Kuala Lumpur and also KL. People call it KL yes, in the know. That's it. KL. That's it. And uh, also. You went to, where was it you went to? Pankor. Pankor. Mm, very nice. Nice island. Uh, yeah, that was lovely. <laughs> Solo yeah. English says The Rock is one of my favourite movies. So he likes The Rock as in the movie. But also there is The Rock, who is <laughs> a former wrestler. 
I think his real name is Dwayne Johnson which isn't quite the same really isn't it somebody called Dwayne but his other name is The Rock so his real name is Dwayne <laughs> so I can see why I, I understand now why he he changed his name to The Rock Patchy wants you to do live streams from different parts of the UK well that's well, we'd yeah, love to do that yeah, I would love to yes unfortunately Mr Duncan doesn't drive I don't drive and also well traveling around takes a long time and also you have to spend money when you travel around you can't travel around for free maybe I could do a live stream from local parks so I could just sleep in the park at night like a homeless person yeah like a like a like a vagrant person or a homeless person Presna says that uh we have your word. See, that's it, you see. We've said we're going to go, so we're now committed. Committed oh, to a Turkish coffee. We definitely are committed. Yes. So, definitely. Or should be committed. We should be committed. Which means, if people want yeah. to know what that means, mm -hmm. it means that if, if somebody says you should be committed, it means you're a bit mad yes. and they think you should be locked up in a home. Yes. Or in a, a mental asylum a mental hospital a mental hospital so, i don't yes. think we have asylums anymore we don't have asylums no <laughs> unless of course you are escaping punishment from overseas well we have i'm feeling hungry mr duncan okay and it is my birthday i still have a million other words to show you for your birthday here's here's what you will be saying this time next Master. year a year from now steve this is what Steve will be saying. One foot in the grave. <laughs> next year, because it's Mr. Steve's big birthday. Next. 30. I'm 30. <laughs> you wish. Just times that by two. One foot in the grave is a, a way of saying that a person is very old. They are close to the end of their life. So now they have not both feet in the grave, but one foot in the grave. They are... They are getting older. They, they have one foot. It means you're, you've got far less years ahead of you than hmm. you've got behind you. Yes. So uh, you're not quite dead, but you're not far off. <laughs> you've got to be, Solo says, you've got to be pretty self-confident to call yourself The Rock. Hmm. That's true, but of course, if you're a wrestler, uh, you've got to be confident. <laughs> so calling yourself The Rock is going to intimidate your opponent. You know it's all fake. It's all fake. Yes, it's all fake. But, uh, they're, Rock they're, says, not, they're not really wrestling, by the way. They're just they're just jumping on top of each other and rolling around. They're not they're not really wrestling. OK, they're Solo not. says that they would call themselves the pebble, <laughs> the pebble. I would call myself the 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 feather duster, the grain of sand. I am the feather duster. <laughs> oh, Steve, you yes. might be you might be over the hill. Over the hill. If you are getting older, if you are becoming old, then we might say that you are now over the hill. Over the hill. It means you're unfashionable. Your ideas are out of date. Your way of thinking and behaving is out of date. Old fashioned. Hmm. Or old. Old I've fashioned. I've never heard it used like that. Over the hill. Yes. No, or it means hill. you're... You're you're a, you're a bit clapped out. Mm. You you you're wearing out physically, mentally. Yes. Uh, all, yes. All your parts have stopped working. Now, women often complain about what happens to their bodies as they get older. But can I just say something to you now? And it might be a little shocking, but men also have problems with their bodies as they get older. Things happen, don't they, Steve? Know that. Steve can tell us all about it. Because you've gone through quite a lot of it, haven't you? <laughs> I, 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 I just don't know what you mean, Mr Duncan. I, I'm as fit and as young looking as I was when I was 21. Mm, OK, then. So as you get older, especially men, not just women. I know women have their, their changes, but also men. Also, things start going wrong with their bodies as they get older. Some of them are really quite disgusting to be honest we never talk about it there's but, a good expression but if you're you are a man you you know what i mean don't you yes. no yes. palmyra says am i feeling in the pink oh in the pink if you feel in the pink it means you're feeling very happy and and confident and buoyant mm. and uh, you've got a pink rosy 
cheeks. Yes. Because you're happy and uh, you're having a lovely time. Yes. Normally uh, it means healthy. Yes. Are you in the pink? Healthy. Mm. Uh, yes, I would say I am. You are feeling fit and healthy. You are in the pink. So over the hill means a person is getting older. Here's another one, Steve. <laughs> are you past it? You are past it. You you're, are. you're saying I am past it. Yes. Well, I'm not saying you are, but it might be something a person will say to a person who is getting older. You might say you are past it. Maybe you go on a walk with your friend and he's walking behind you and he's <sighs> out of breath. You might say to him, oh, <laughs> I think you're past it, mate. I think you are past it. It means you, you can't do that thing anymore. Yeah. You are unable to do it anymore because you are past it. Going, being invited to nightclubs as you get older, uh, you might say somebody might invite you to a, a nightclub and you might say, oh, I'm past it. I'm past all that now. Mm. Yeah, in, in other words, you've reached a certain age where you don't want to do a particular mm. thing mm. anymore or you can't do it. Yes. Uh, you might have been... I don't know, a, a, a long distance runner or, or you might you might have done marathons or you might have been a sports person where you played tennis or or a vigorous game like squash. And uh, somebody might say, oh, do you remember when you used to say play squash when all those years ago? Mm. And you then might say, well, no, I'm past it now. Mm. You're too old. You can't do it anymore. Yeah. Or any 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 activity. That, that requires a lot of energy and strength. You might be too old to do it. Are you going out for lunch, says Cecilia? No, we're not. Uh, we went out yesterday. Yes, we're having. Well, nobody said happy birthday to me yesterday, but yeah, well, we did. I look very young, says Beatrice. That's do, because of the flattering light. Do you do realise that people in the street don't know it's your birthday? I don't know what you were. Were you expecting strangers? Just to come up to you no, and say happy. Just you, they, my mother and my sister. Well, we did. We said happy birthday. We gave you bloody cards and I gifts. I gave you this lovely tie. This tie is Mr. Steve's gift. I gave it to him. Yeah. So there. So yes, we did. We did say happy birthday yesterday. How dare you? How how dare you? How dare you? Lee, uh, it's it's Lee's mother's birthday today. Mm. Uh, Yes. Mm hmm. I've got wonderful skin. Oh, OK. Says Cecilia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Except next year, Mr. Steve will be. An old codger. Oh, yes. So this is not a friendly thing. This is not a nice thing. This is this is almost like an insult. But you might describe an old person. You might see an old man walking along the road and. He looks frail and old, and you might describe them as an old codger. Old-fashioned, wearing old-fashioned clothes, yes. not finding it difficult to walk, yes. maybe not particularly nice person, an old codger. Hmm. Just an elderly person, an elderly man. Somebody I, who moans a lot. Yes. Elderly people tend to moan a lot, don't yes. they, and complain. Yes. Uh, that's what I find hmm. anyway. Uh, and uh, yeah, an old codger. Like usually it, said, usually a man, isn't it? Yes, quite often. And also, a person who just looks old, frail. Maybe they're they're just sitting there on their own in the park, feeding the pigeons, something like that. Oh, another one. Here, Steve. Another one. An old geezer. An old geezer. So. When we say an old geezer, well, first of all, in British English, the word geezer means man. Ah. So when we say geezer in British English, uh, we, we mean man. Is so it an, a slang word? Uh, yes, it is, I suppose. But an old geezer is an old man. However, in American English, and this is interesting, in American English, the word geezer does mean an old man. Right. So when we say geezer, when we say it in American English, ah, we right. are saying an old person, an old man. But in English, in British English, geezer just means man. That's it. We have to qualify it oh, by right. putting old in front. Life has no guarantee, says Theo. 
uh, because uh, their brother passed away before their 50s. Yeah. Life has no guarantees. No. You don't know. Exactly. You, don't, you don't know what's around the corner. Luck of the draw when it comes to your genetic makeup. Live every day as if it's your last because one day you will be right. An old biddy says solo. An old biddy, that's it. An so you woman. use the word, yes, an old woman. So an old geezer or an old codger is a man. An old biddy is a woman. Hmm. Quite often we will say old biddy or an old... <laughs> She's an old biddy. Steve, old hag. <laughs> old hag, a hag. Yeah, an old biddy is just an old person, but it's you wouldn't want to be described. If You might describe somebody... As an old biddy, oh, oh, she's a bit of an old biddy. So she, you know, somebody who's sort of old and a bit moany and just an elderly person. An old hag might be also old and ugly. An old hag is somebody who's let themselves go, <laughs> let their appearance go. So their hair is all greasy and and their skin has not been looked after. <laughs> Come here, come here and talk to me. Somebody, uh, you might also describe that if you were being unkind to somebody mm -hmm. who was not elderly, but was, say, in their 40s or 50s. OK. You might describe a woman as an old hag if she puts too much makeup on, dyes her hair too dark and puts lots of makeup on you might you might say she looks like an old hag okay that would be an unkind thing to say but you might say that i i love the way we are actually teaching everyone today to use horrible expressions i think yeah. this this one might be the worst one a wrinkly a wrinkly a person who is old their skin will be all wrinkly so you might describe a person who is old as wrinkly or a wrinkly so a wrinkly person is a person who has wrinkly skin quite often as you get older your skin I've noticed with Steve just not not many but one or two wrinkles and also even me around my eyes I have I have some small fine wrinkles laughter lines that's what you call them. laughter lines yeah I've got laughter lines. when no, you laugh You've got wrinkles around your eyes. Steve, it means you're a happy person. No one does that much laughing. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm mm -hmm. getting hungry, Mr. Duncan, and we've got to go for a walk. Yes, we have. We want to look, look at the Ford. So there, there is a, a down lovely the road. I don't mean a car. No. Okay. A Ford is is a, is a water that passes across a road. Yes. And you have to drive through it, but it when in we've had lots of rain, so it's going to be very deep. Yes. And we want to go and have a look and then so, come back for a hot crust bun. So when we say Ford, tea. we mean it's actually a road that has a river flowing over it. It's actually yes. the other way around. What did I say? <laughs> you said a river with a road under it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's a, a road that has a river going across it. Yes, yeah, sometimes they build roads in this country and uh, they don't always, there's a river, but they don't always build the road, a bridge over the road because the river only flows at certain times. Mm. Um, some of the time it'll be dry, but other times it won't be. But it might be a road that's not used that often. So it's the, the council haven't spent money on putting a bridge over there. So you'll see a sign saying Ford, uh, and you've just got to be careful when you drive mm. through it that you don't flood your car. Mm. Uh, Basically the same spelling as the car. Have you got any more words left to share? Yes, Mr. Duncan? we've had some negative ones. Let's have some positive ones. Ah, oh. sprightly. A person who is sprightly. So this is something nice and positive. So I, I wanted to end on something positive, you see. So a person who is sprightly has lots of energy, lots of vitality. They have lots of energy. They, they appear to have youth. Even though they look older, they still have a lot of energy. So we can say that they are very sprightly. Yes, yeah, somebody who is elderly, maybe 70 or 80 years of age, but they've got lots of energy and youth about them. Uh, as you say, they go on long walks. They, they, they've just got lots of energy. Mm. I can't see that I will be sprightly when I'm older. No. Maybe. 
They're usually <laughs> skinny as well, I would say. Yeah, you're not very sprightly now. True. <laughs> Except when I'm on the live stream. Yes, you have a lot of energy. So sprightly, a person who is sprightly, a person who has lots of energy. Also, you can have an attitude as well as you get older. You can be young at heart. Young at heart. So you might be old looking on the outside, mm. but uh, your heart, your spirit uh, remains young. Yes. And you have a positive outlook on life. Mm. I would say um, I look young on the outside, but uh, I my thoughts are not. I not, wouldn't say I was young at heart. Maybe you're, you? the re you're the reverse. I'm the reverse of that. I think Steve is old at heart. So he's young, but he, he feels and behaves and reacts to things like, like an elderly person. True. I, uh, I think you're the reverse. But yes, some people describe me as young at heart because people can't believe how old I am. So there. Yeah, well, young uh, at Rosa heart. Rosa says something which oh. leads me to uh, explain that, yes, yesterday we did. My sister and my mother came over to visit and we went out for a lovely a meal. Hmm. We did. We had a nice little reunion yesterday. It was rather nice, in fact. My legs are aching, Mr. Duncan, yes. and my back's aching. Here's, here's the final one, then. You could be full of life. Full of life. Full of life. Energy. Yes. Full of life. Full of high. Joy de vivre. Yes. French. <laughs> you, yes. You're, you're elderly, but you live life to the full. Yes. You enjoy life. You, you take a breath and you, th you, you feel grateful to still be alive you don't waste any of your time on silly things like watching too much television yes or worrying about things that you needn't worry about small yes. insignificant moments from your past live life to the full so that somebody who who maybe samples all the delights of life mm. uh well into their old age that's it and doesn't give up that's it i suppose you could be a you could be any age and be full of life because I've met some young people who are not full of life. They are actually quite morose and unhappy. So just because you're young, it doesn't mean that you are going to always be happy and be full of life. Just as I suppose being old doesn't mean that you you will be lifeless. Belarusia right. and Anna both say that you are young at heart. Oh. You are. Thank you very much. Is that for me? Oh, thank you. Anyway, Steve, I have a feeling you want to go. I think we should because we haven't got much time left if we're going for our walk. No, it is getting dark outside. Let's have a look outside because it's quite it's quite interesting out there today. So the sun is now out. Yes. It, it is hard to believe how bad the weather was last night. It was absolutely awful. Oh, look, there's some sheep in the how back. Lovely. In the distance. Oh, there are some lovely sheep. And yesterday... We bought something yesterday, didn't we, Steve? Do you want to see something really cute? Have you shown it yet? No. Oh, oh look. <laughs> this is something we bought yesterday in Much Wenlock. We couldn't resist because it's so cute. I bought it. It's so cute. Steve actually bought this. So isn't that lovely? That is a big, fluffy sheep. Isn't that great? I absolutely adore this sheep. So this is a new addition to our, our family of animals that live in the house. Our menagerie. Our collection of stuffed animals. <laughs> a menagerie is a collection of animals. I think this one is being overstuffed. Look how fat this sheep is. That is a very fat sheep. Been eating too much grass. I right, so. Mr Duncan. Are you going? I'm going. So uh, thank you all for your birthday wishes and see you again next year. <laughs> probably see you next week yes uh probably not actually mr duncan oh really i'll explain oh. afterwards oh. to you there might be no but mr I steve probably won't be here next sunday no mr steve next sunday i've been invited to a party oh, okay. a birthday party yeah. i'm going to live life to the full oh okay i wonder he doesn't know yet no i don't know this is this <laughs> this, this is news to well, me while you were on live i got an invite in fact, it was for Saturday, but I can't go on Saturday because I've got a concert Saturday night. Oh, so I'm going to go on Sunday instead. OK, then. So, you are ta -ta, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for all that. Probably inform see you in two weeks. Thank you for all that information. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, 
well, I'm going to go and eat something and then we're going for a walk. Yep. Bye. Bye bye. And there is Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve has gone. I have to move. I have to move the thing that he was standing on. So so can, can you believe it today? We, we actually got Mr. Steve to stand on something. <laughs> Isn't my sheep lovely? I think this sheep is really lovely. <laughs> Very nice. It's almost time for me to go. I can't believe it. It's almost time to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. Something slightly different. We were celebrating Mr. Steve's birthday. You can have an Irish stew. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yesterday we had hot pot, which is a lovely traditional English meal. Very nice. Martha Poland says goodbye to Mr. Steve. Steve has gone. I will be back with you for those wondering. I will be back with you on Wednesday. Don't forget back with you on Wednesday, 2 p.m. UK time. And also don't forget my new website. For those who don't know or haven't seen it yet, there is actually a new website and you can see it right now. There it is. So my new website has all of my lessons, my playlists, lots of other fun things as well. And over the next few days, I will be adding some new features to the website because I've been so busy over the past few days, for which I apologize. <gasps> Such a busy time, a very busy month indeed. Thank you, Christelle. Thank you, Beatriz. Thank you also to Rosa, Jamelia, Luis Mendez. Hello, Luis. I didn't say hello to you earlier. I apologize for that. So a big bonjour to Lewis. Also to Noemi. Thank you very much for all of your lovely messages. I think Mr. Steve has had a lovely birthday. We are now going to have a cup of tea and a hot cross bun. Ooh. If you want to find out more about hot cross buns, I might talk about that on Wednesday. I hope you can join me on Wednesday. 2 p.m. UK time. Thank you also, Lewis, Cecilia, Ma Maria. Thank you very much. I am going now. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thank you for watching me today. I really appreciate your company on this Sunday and you know what's coming next. Until the next time we meet here on YouTube. Stay safe, stay happy and stay young at heart. Ta-ta for now.